Did you feel that? Something just happened that many of us take for granted. Another year is officially in the past. A chapter is closed. And now we look ahead to a new year. The mistakes, missteps, and missed opportunities of the past give way to hope, excitement, and joy for the new life God gives us. Pursuing Christ with each new dawn. Through His grace, we get the chance to reset the clock, to forget what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. As we work, play, rest, and worship, we know His mercies are new every morning. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, arriving at next year's end through His faithfulness. So whatever we do this year, let's give it to God seeking his will, trusting his plan, and taking this opportunity to restart. Good morning, Hillcrest family. We have come to the last day of 2022 and the last Sabbath. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth 
endureth to all generations. Please stand for the invocation. Our loving Father, we come to you this day asking that you'll come and be with us on this beautiful Sabbath morning. Lord, give us what we need today to help us move into the new year rejoicing in your name. Come now, our Father, dwell among us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing for the opening song. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on and put those hands together and let's celebrate Jesus today. We want to welcome God, who is our guest of honor, amen, into this place. We know that he's already here, but is it all right if we give God a formal invitation of worship today? Hallelujah. Come on, it's all right if you put your hands together and let's celebrate Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. We give you glory and honor. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Come on, everybody say, here we, here we are, Lord. God, we're awaiting your arrival. God, you're welcome in this place. Well, in the midst of our praise, say, here we, here we are, Lord. And God, we're awaiting your arrival. God, you're welcome in this place. Come on, dwell in the midst. It is our Say prepare. Come on with a lifted voice and an open heart. God, we invite you in this room. Hey, say you are. Hey. God, and we reverence you, Jesus. God, you reign. You have all power. This celebration. glory in this place. Bless your name. Our hymn of worship this morning can be found in your hymnals in hymn number 229. All hail the power of Jesus name. Hymn number 229. All hail the power of Jesus name. Everybody sing it all hail. Verse 2, ye chosen. 
Verse 3, Len. Congregation, you may be seated. Just other than the elders and the deacons, if you remain standing, please. Amen. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. How many are grateful that the Lord has brought you through another year? Amen. Amen. I know this year probably had a lot of peaks and a lot of valleys, but we praise God that he has kept us through and he has walked with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. I pray that you had a, a wonderful and blessed Christmas holiday on last week, and I hope that you're looking forward to the new year in terms of what God has in store for us. I want you to know that last week we were so saddened that we could not be together for our Christmas musical the uh, weather just brought about things that were just beyond our control why we could not have worship service last week. But I want you to know we have something special planned not only for service today, but for the first Sabbath of the year. And so some of the folk that uh, you didn't get to hear sing for the Christmas musical, well, they're going to be singing on the first Sabbath of the year. Amen. And so we have a special New Year's first Sabbath program in store for you. We're going to be talking about uh, renewing our hope and experiencing the healing of Jesus Christ in 2023. How many want to be renewed by Jesus next year? Amen? Amen. And so we are excited about that. I just want to take a moment. I just want to welcome back here with us Sister Wanda Coleman. I know she had uh, some challenges physical, but she is here. And we praise God. It's so good to see you um, today, Wanda. I want to welcome any uh, visitors that we have with us today. I want to give you an opportunity just to wave your hand wherever you are. Oh, I see you there. Sister Brenda, she's with us online every Wednesday night for Recharge, and she's here in person today. So good to see her um, on today. We're excited that she is here. I'm excited to see all of you. Amen? Um, good to see you, and we're excited again about what the Lord is doing. Uh, I want to just encourage you to keep in your prayers um, the Fletcher family, Elder Darnell Fletcher, his aunt passed away on yesterday, and so we want to continue to keep them lifted up. We want to remember Dr. Wayne Moore, um, who is still on the mend. I understand that he is, uh, he was in the hospital this week, but he is home today. And of course, we also want to remember Sister Sonia Bennett, who is still going through the process of receiving her new heart. She's doing well. Talk to her this week, but we want to continue to keep her in our prayers as she is also still on the mend. I want to remind you that uh, uh, Sister Buchanan, um, I believe she's here today, um, her, the funeral for her brother will be this Wednesday. And again, you can look at our church website and you'll find more information in terms of those details. Uh, I just want to wish a happy birthday to all of our December birthdays. Can we just say happy birthday to our December? Amen. And I know I was looking at the calendar, and they were, there are three members here that, say, that share the same birthday. Hope I got it right. Howard Hassel, Brother uh, Clement Fleming, and Sister Sally Lowe. They share the same birthday. Did you know that? Amen? All right. And so we want to wish them 
a happy December, December 23rd. Y'all, y'all just play along with me. I'm, <laughs> I messed that up. I thought I was doing something, didn't know, getting the birthday dates right, but I messed up. I messed it up. I know Howard had a birthday. <laughs> Am I right, Howard? And Clement had a birthday. So Silly Lowe, Sally Lowe had it in September? Oh, I thought I saw her name on there. Anyway, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> um, a couple more things. I want to let you know that on next week, we will be resuming our children and youth Sabbath school. It will begin at 10 a.m. Um, we're still working in terms of where that location will be. We'll update you with that on this week. And also, um, we're moving Children's Church. We were doing it um, weekly, but we're going to be moving it to once a quarter. And so we'll update you on that. But we want to encourage you to bring out um, your children and your youth to our Sabbath school starting next week. We'll have it every Sabbath at 10 a.m. Um, we had a great time this week at the skating party, our youth and children's uh, skating party. We had an awesome time, pizza and fun, and we're looking forward to doing that again next year. Now I want to welcome our church clerk. She has a membership um, transfer that she would like to read for us uh, today. Good morning, Hillcrest. Happy Sabbath. I have a first reading. They're all going out of Hillcrest. Corey Jenkins from Hillcrest to Riverside. Demetria Scruggs and Jane Scruggs from Hillcrest to Bethany SDA Church, Memphis. Is this the first reading? Okay. All right, so this is just our first reading. On next week, we'll do a second reading, and we will take a vote at that time. Understand the clerk has a presentation? I do, and I'm going to ask my good friend, Sister Knight, to come over here and help me. Did you guys have a, a great holiday? I did, too, but it's never too late to celebrate something. And we didn't forget. We just didn't get to celebrate. We did not get to celebrate two things, the pastor's anniversary. He actually came here the first week in December. The first week in December. I've asked him to come another week so we won't have to do so much in December, but I can't, I can't work it out. So we missed that, and we miss. well, I guess we'll present this. So happy oh. anniversary, Pastor. We Thank love you. you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Jay, right here? Oh, oh. Jack, you know what I thought about on Christmas morning? What? I said, should I send the pastor a text and, you know, tell him, What's going on? Or no, I, I think we needed to present it in front of the church because it's from the church, right? Okay, yes, it, it, it is. Are, are there kids here? Are the, are the kids? I don't, they haven't made it yet. They're still in route. Well, well they're going to be extra surprised when they get here. And you know what? You talk so well. You deliver so well. I'm going to let you tell everyone what well, we got. Um, I just left the wilderness at the Smokies in Gatlinburg, and it's an indoor water park. And I tried to get the committee to let's send our pastor and his family there. But they chose, because they had such a wonderful time at Opryland, it is right down the street, <laughs> to give the pastor, his wife, and the three boys three nights to uh, Opryland yeah. Hotel, the water park, all their food, and their ballet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Wow. Pastor, wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You know, I love Opryland. My family loves it. And it's expensive even when <laughs> So thank you. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Oh, so we, really, thank you so much. That's so kind of you all. Where's our committee? Where's our committee? I don't know. If you're on the committee, can you just stand? Because these are the people that voted. The, uh, part, what's the name of his committee? Mr. Leader. This is the pastoral events team, and this is the committee. Every time there's occasion, we vote, and we talk, and we come up with something, and we do it for the pastor on behalf of the church. So I'd just like to acknowledge the team right now. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Pastor, I'm struggling with my own. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, my family, we're so grateful. You guys really take care of us and love us, and we really do appreciate your generosity and your kindness. We do really do appreciate that. Thank you so much um, for that wonderful gift. My kids are going to be excited. They love that place. So, 
Um, before I take my seat, I just want to, just to take a moment just to introduce, um, today we have a special um, gospel recording artist in the person of Brother Billy Gaines. Some of you may remember him, he and his late wife, they were the Billy and Sarah Gaines. Hey, you remember them, all right? And so um, he's with us today, huh? <laughs> you were a young child. Um, um, uh, Brother Gaines, um, to be honest, he doesn't know this, but um, he is one of my favorite singers, literally. He's one of my favorite singers. And when I first, the, when I first started learning how to sing, I can't sing like Brother Gaines, the first song I ever sung publicly was a song that you and your wife sang together for Pathfinder Day. He doesn't know what that is, but it's like the Boy Scouts of the Adventist Church. And so we're so um, blessed that he is here today. Um, he's a two-time Dove Award winner. He has sung with uh, Nicole Mullen and so many people, CeCe Winans. And, but beyond all of that, I think even in our communication, what, we, what I noticed that stood out right off the bat is his genuine love for Jesus Christ and his desire to glorify him through his ministry. I can't go into detail of how that exchange happened here today, but it was very clear that it was not about entertainment, wasn't about the money, it was about ministering to our hearts. And so today, um, he is going to sing just before I preach, and then he's going to do a special, a special communion feature after the sermon. He'll sing a few of his songs here today, and so we're looking forward to that. We welcome you, Brother Gang. So glad that you could come and spend this New Year's Eve with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you uh, to begin to prepare your heart uh, for prayer um, as we prepare to come before the Lord. singing say when we pray Prayers of the righteous. Come on, say yes. Anybody thankful for God's love? the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. K. Arthur tells a story of the heavenly court in session and the seraphim and cherubim standing around the throne and standing before the door of the, the tabernacle. And all of a sudden, a little girl starts running, Daddy, Daddy. And the seraphim have to stand back and push the door open. And everything that's happening in the court has to stop because the judge's daughter is coming to talk to her daddy. So we are coming now to talk to our daddy. The word of the Lord says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed 
through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the last Sabbath of 2022, and it has been a, of a year. If you have made it through in one piece, I invite you to stand. And if you have some specific victory, I invite you to come down. If you have a specific request, I invite you to come down. If you want to stand in place of somebody who is not here and want to pray for them, I invite you to come down. I know we haven't done this in three years. We haven't come to the altar for prayer. The altar is in heaven, but this is a representation of the altar of God. I invite you to come because God knows our hearts. He knows our needs. And he is waiting on tiptoes to hear our prayers that he may answer exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the holy and righteous name of the Lord. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. Thank you so much for bringing us through the hell of 2022. Thank you so much for bringing us into the house of the Lord. Thank you so much for giving us breath in our body and, and limbs that work and minds that are not in an insane asylum. Thank you, Lord, for bodies that are healthy and, and breath that can speak the name of the Lord most high. We bless your name and we're so thankful we don't deserve to be here. There's no fairness in grace. We are so thankful that you did not treat us according to our, what our sins dictated and what the enemy accused us of, but you blessed us according to your matchless and wonderful and powerful grace. We bless and glorify your holy name. Lord, we stand here. We stand because some of us are broken. Well, all of us are broken. And we know that the only place we can find healing is in you. We stand because there are specific needs that we have, physical and mental, emotional, spiritual needs, Lord, financial needs. And your word says if we come to you, that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We come, oh Lord, because we are empty and need of filling. We come, oh Lord, we stand for, for in representation of those who cannot stand for themselves. We bless your name and pray for Sonia. We pray for Wayne. We pray for Mary King. We pray for Lou Pearson. We pray for Easter French. We pray, oh Lord, for, for Sandy Lewis and others who are broken and not here. We pray that you would go and visit them and are grateful that you have done it, but that you would do it to a different measure than you had done before. We dare to ask you for more of your Holy Spirit. We dare to ask you for more healing. We dare to ask you for a double portion as Elisha did, not negating what you've already done, but recognizing our great need calls for greater grace. We're so grateful for your strength and your power. We're so grateful for the hope that you have given us. We're so grateful, Lord, for the plans that you have to prosper us into this new year and not to harm us, to bring us to the expected end of abiding with you and you abiding in us. We surrender ourselves to you. We say, Lord, you do it because we cannot. We have looked high, and we have looked low, and we have looked broad, and we have looked wide, and we have found nothing. So now we look up. That's where our redemption lies. Look up. Our redemption is in you. Thank you so, so much for bringing redemption to us because we cannot come to you for redemption. We thank you 
for bringing it to us. We bless the Lord. We bless your name for our pastor and his ministry. And just pray as we move into the next year, in the next phase, that the power of God, the strength of God, the support of God would rest heavily upon him. And that as his sheep, we would follow as sheep where you have designated for us to be led. And we, we lift this service up to you, Lord. We know that only one glimpse of you will change us forever. So we ask that we would glimpse the face of God today, that our hearts would burn, that our limbs would shake, that we would know what has come over us, but we would know that it was the power of the Spirit to transform his children so that we can see you face to face today. We thank you. This is your time. You do whatever you want to with it, and we will, will worship you and bless your name. Thank you for hearing and answering. Thank you for the chains that have been released. Thank you for the hearts that have been lifted up. Thank you for the hope that has been given. Thank you for the direction for those who don't know where to go. We bless you. We honor you as God. We say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This prayer has been answered because you are a great God and wonderful to be praised. In your holy name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Could we put our hands together and let's celebrate Jesus in this place? Oh, come on. We can do better than that. I said, can we put our hands together and let's celebrate Jesus in this place? He's worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Can, can, can you do me a favor? Can we stand up on our feet for those that are able to and that are willing? Can you stand up on your feet and let's, give, let's celebrate Jesus one more time in this place? We are here at the end of a new uh, at the end of a year getting ready to enter into the new year and that's simply a blessing is it not is there not anybody grateful for the great things that God has done in your life can you just look back over your life and see where God has brought you from and see where God has brought you to that's simply a reason to give God glory so can we give God glory in this place hallelujah god i thank you bless your name jesus hallelujah I want you to do me a favor because it's praise and worship time in the house of the Lord. And I want you to look to somebody across the room and say, neighbor, come on, say it again. Say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I come to praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you truly come to praise the name of Jesus, I dare you to unleash a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. The song simply says, God, you reign. God, you reign above all, above all things. God, you reign in this place. Can we just lift the Savior up today as we sing praises to you, God, in song? Hallelujah. Bless your name. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, say, my God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Yeah. Say, Lord, above. Hallelujah. Say, my God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Yeah. Lord, you reign above. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Say, with power and majesty. Dominion, you reign. Hallelujah. Thank you for reigning, Jesus. Say with power and majesty. Dominion. Say you reign. Come on, let's lift it up. Oh, say my God reigns. Say our God reigns. Say Lord above. Hallelujah. Say my God reigns. Say, our God reigns, yeah. Say, Lord, you reign above. Bless your name, Jesus. Come on, say, with power. Dominion. Say, you reign. Hallelujah. Is anybody grateful in the house today? Come on, say, with power and majesty. Dominion. Say, you reign. Come on, let's lift it up. Oh. 
Say, our God reigns. Say, Lord, you reign above. Hallelujah. Say, my God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Yeah. Say, Lord, you reign above every name. Come on, lift it up and say, with power and majesty. Dominion. Come on, point to say, you reign. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God, with power and majesty. Oh, we do. You got your reign. Come on, let's lift it up. Oh, say my God reigns. Say our God reigns. Yeah, Lord, you reign above. Hallelujah. Say my God reigns. Say our God reigns. Yeah. Say Lord, you reign above every name. Hallelujah. Come on, say with power. You reign, hallelujah, Jesus. Say with power and majesty, yeah. Hey, dominion. You reign. Come on, let's go one more time. Oh, say my God reigns. Say our God reigns. Lord, you reign above. Hallelujah. Say my God reigns. Say our God above every day. I love this part. It says, over my circumstance. God, you're giving me a second chance. Hey, is there anybody grateful for another chance? Hallelujah. Say, over my circumstance. You're giving me. Hallelujah. God, I'm grateful for another chance. Say, over my circumstance. You're giving me, yeah. Hallelujah. Say one more time. Say over my circumstance. You're giving me. Say you reign. You reign. God, I thank you for reigning in my life. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voice and say you reign. Hey, you reign. Oh, you reign. Come on, say you reign. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. Oh, come on, sing it again. Say you reign. Yes, you do, God. Hey, hey, you reign. Hallelujah. Come on, last time, say you reign. Hey, you reign. Come on, say you still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that no, no matter what situations we face, no matter what the circumstances, God will forever reign. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Do y'all mind if we just worship just a little while longer? Can we give glory to the Lamb of God? Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. God, we give you glory. Because glory is due to your name, O oh God. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. We give you glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Lamb. Everybody singing glory. Glory to the Lamb. God, we come to give you glory. Say glory to the Lamb. Come on, say glory to the Lamb. God, we give you glory. glory. Hallelujah. Come on, say for. For he is Alpha and Omega. Omega. Hallelujah. Say forever, forever is, he. is he. 
Hallelujah. Come on, say he reigns forever. Come on, sing holy, holy is he. Come on, sing glory to the Lamb. We give you glory to the Lamb. Sing glory to the Lamb. God, we give you glory to the Lamb. Come on, say four. Alpha and Omega, hallelujah, forever is he, hallelujah, and he will, he will, he will reign forever, God, we lift our voice and say, hold. To your name, oh God. Glory to the Lamb. God, we give you glory to, to the Lamb. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you glory. Glory to the Lamb. Come on, lift it up. Say glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah, God. We give you glory. We give you glory. Jesus, to your name, oh God, say glory, to your name, God, hey, say glory to the name of Jesus, to the Lamb, come on, lift it up, we give you glory, Jesus, come on, say glory, somebody to wave your hand and open up your mouth and give the Lord some glory in this place. God, you deserve the glory and the honor. And we open up our mouths to give you praise today. God, we worship you today. God, with the fruit of our lips, we give you glory, 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 glory. We give you glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, lift it up. Say glory. Forever give you glory. Hey. God, I promise that I'll forever give you glory. Hallelujah. Come on, last time, say glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, can we fill this room with glory? Is there anybody out there that says no matter what I go through, no matter what I face, even when I'm laying flat on my face, or my back is against the wall, that I will forever give you glory. Is there anybody in the house that can testify and say, God, I'll forever give you glory. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Good morning. It's truly a blessing to be here and to stand in your presence to celebrate Jesus with you and to glorify his wonderful name. Because you know what? I just love him. Don't you love him this morning? Hasn't he been wonderful all of your days, even when you didn't know him? While we were yet in sin, Christ died for sinners. I'm so glad about that this morning. So I'm going to sing this song, My Jesus, I Love Thee. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. I got 
a band and a can this morning, so I'll be better off with y'all, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry? Get them to play something? My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all my follies of sin I resign. My grace is redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, it is now. I love thee before thee, because thou hast first loved me. And purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my bride. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now, tis now, to now, tis now. If ever I love thee, my Jesus. Tis now, right now, Lord, I love you right now, my Jesus, tis now. Hallelujah. God bless you all. just want to, before I pray, I see today um, Brother Wayne Thompson is here. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, Brother Thompson. 
God is in the miracle working business. Amen. 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 We also want to wish Sister Van Leer a happy birthday. Today is her birthday. Amen. I got that right. <laughs> happy birthday, Sister Van Leer. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me now as we ask God's continued blessing on this preaching moment. Father, Lord, we love you like the song says. We thank you for wearing that crown on your brow. And Lord, today as we turn our hearts to you and your word, Lord, it is our prayer that we would see you more clearly than before. May our hearts be united with you. In Jesus' name, amen. I came across a story about a family that I uh, invited some guests over on a very hot summer day. And when all the people had come over and they had gathered together and they were sitting at the dinner table, um, the mother turned to her young son, four-year-old son, Johnny, and asked him to say the blessings on the food. Little boy, not really wanting to listen to his mother, a little irritated, said, well, mom, I don't know what to say. Mother turned to him, well, just just pray what you, what you hear me say. Little boy bowed his head in humbled obedience and said, Oh, Lord, why did I invite these people to my house <laughs> on such a hot day like this? <laughs> I read another story <laughs> about this bishop by the name of Bishop Potter. And he was, at the time, traveling on one of those big ocean liners to Europe or across the transatlantic. And when he got there and they were checking him in, they told him that he was going to have a roommate in his cabin. And so he went down to his cabin. And he, after being there for a little bit, he came back up to the gentleman and he said, that checked him in, he says, well, uh, I need to see if you could, if I could check in my gold watch and all my valuables. And then he said, you know, I went down to the cabin and I saw uh, the gentleman that would be in the room with me. And just judging by appearances, he looked like a person that I can't really trust. The guy said, sure, sir, I'll, I'll put it away. Uh, he said, the guy that's staying in the cabin, he just came up here and gave me all his valuables. <laughs> He said the same thing about you. <laughs> Both of these stories really kind of shows how it's so easy for us to point out and see other people's shortcomings, what they need, while at the same time overlooking or failing to see our need. Hmm? So today, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you about what Jesus says in our passage today. You'll see here in just a moment about the importance of examining ourselves and our hearts before him first before we try to help anybody else struggling on the way. So I normally don't do stuff like this. The introvert in me wouldn't do it. I would be mad if the pastor told me to do this if I was sitting there. But I'm asking you to turn to your neighbor and say... <laughs> It starts with me. <laughs> Turn to your other neighbor and say, it starts with me. <laughs> I want to invite you to grab your copy of God's word and go with me to Matthew chapter 7. And I want to read in your hearing in verses, starting in verses 1, 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version of the Bible, Matthew chapter 7. And here's how the word of God is reading uh, to us. Today. We're going to read all the way to verse 5. Jesus says, Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice the log that is in your eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye 
when there's a log in your own eye. You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye. And then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. I want to tag our message today. Me first. Jesus has been preaching a sermon on how to live as citizens in a, of his eternal kingdom in a world that is hostile and resistant towards the values of his kingdom. In other words, he's really trying to get us to see the type of attitude and mindset that we as his followers should possess if we are going to live out his character in community. In our passage today, you know, his words are strong, but he's really describing what is needed in order for a community that is bearing his name to really be a safe place for people to come with all of their weaknesses and their faults and their shortcomings. He is describing one of the ways in which we can love each other well. And the first thing he wants us to guard against is a judgmental spirit. Now, I want to suggest to you today that Jesus is not here talking about turning a blind eye to sin or immorality. He's not talking about um, uh, overlooking injustice or oppression or when somebody does something wrong that they shouldn't do. He's not talking about that because later in Matthew 18, he says that if somebody sins against you, if somebody offends you, he says, go and tell them their fault. And so what today Jesus is trying to get us to see is that, that he wants us to understand the spirit in which we are to help each other on the journey as we all struggle with the sin that is raging inside of all of our hearts. Are you all with me today? And here Jesus begins this section of his sermon by warning us against trying really, uh, he's really saying, warning us against judging because what he's suggesting to us is that we're trying to take the place of God. It It is seeing ourselves in an elevated position. It is climbing up on our high horse and looking down our noses at our fellow brother and brothers and sisters because they're not just as far along on the Christian journey as we are. Or maybe they're not living their lives in the way that we think that they should be living their lives like we are. Now, I know that's nobody here in our, in our church. You see, Jesus is, is not just talking about just the acts of judging that when we gossip about one another's failures and faults. Uh, He's not talking about giving an unkind glance or distancing ourselves, but he's speaking against a mindset that makes ourselves, our lives, our perspectives, our opinions, the standard for how other people should live. Oh, you're not with me today. And I want to suggest to you today that this normally infiltrates Christian communities, not because we want to be self-righteous, not because we want to look down at other people, but, but somehow in our attempt to be holy and be right with God, we start getting proud of how we're living, and then we start looking down on other people because they're not living their lives in the same way we are. Some years ago, I heard a story about uh, a woman who was complaining how upset she was that the church was no longer enforcing the no makeup rule for women. She said, all those years I didn't wear makeup and because of that I missed out on getting a husband. And now look at everybody, ain't nobody saying nothing about not wearing makeup and she was still mad and she wanted everybody else to be just like her. And I want to suggest to you today that, 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 that Jesus is cautioning us against an overly critical, self-righteous, judgmental spirit because he knows there is a temptation in human nature to compare ourselves to others. 
uh, one of my favorite gospel artists, Jonathan McReynolds, writes a song. He says, comparison kills. Hmm? He's saying in that song, really, that not only does comparison and what Jesus is getting at in this sermon, not only does it kill the people that we judge, but it silently kills us. It robs us of his joy when we make ourselves and not Jesus the standard of right living. We end up being merciless Christians, having no mercy and no grace for the weaknesses and the the faults of our brothers and of our fellow brothers and sisters. And we justify our condescension because we said, I did it, and so you should be able to do it too. I stopped eating pork. (laughs) Hmm? We don't even talk about that anymore, but anyway. Y'all like, huh? We stopped supposed to eat pork now. Uh, Jesus has this concern because he knows how harmful this kind of thinking can be to a community. And so he ushers and he issues a sobering warning. That's what he says in the second half of that verse. He says, uh, verse 2, I'm sorry, he says, For the judgment which the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure you use it, it will be measured to you. In other words, Jesus is saying is that if you are without mercy and lacking in empathy for the weak, then the Lord will deal with you in the same way we have dealt with others. Here, he's bringing into mind the final judgment. He says this because this attitude towards fellow sinners reveal That really, although we are practicing and professing faith in him, that we have rejected his love and his forgiveness. When we are unforgiving and impatient with one another, when we hold our wrongs and our sins against one another, it reveals that we have not experienced or not experiencing the heart of Jesus Christ. Jesus illustrates this later in Matthew, the the famous story of the man that owed this king an an enormous amount of money. If you were to translate it today, it would almost be a billion dollars. There was no way he was going to be able to pay it back. And the king forgave him. And that same man, when he left the presence of the king, he went out and saw one of his fellow servants who didn't owe him nearly as much. And he started strangling him. And when Jesus, when the, when the king confronts him, he says, I gave you mercy and you did not have mercy with your fellow servants. Jesus warns against judging and condemning one another because we don't know, as one writer says, how hard that person has tried not to sin. Oh, you're not with me today. He's saying, don't be condemnatory. Don't look down your nose because you don't know what's in their history, what they have been through. You don't know how hard they tried to resist the sin. He says, you don't know the the power of the forces that are against them that led them to their sin. And the question really is, we don't even know what we would do If the shoe was on our foot. Jesus warns against judging and condemning. Because he knows everybody's story. Mm. He knows the context. Why you are the way you are. What's broken in your life that has led you to this place. He knew what somebody said to you before you came into the church. And then somebody else just triggered you and set you overboard. He knows. So he says don't judge one another. Because we don't know other people's story. Hmm? Heard a story about famous preacher John Wesley. You guys have heard of him. Um, He was... Uh, This gentleman, they were asked to give to a charity, and he came, and the guy gave a small gift to the charity, and then John Wesley proceeded to criticize him publicly. He says, you are a miser 
and you are covetous. What you bringing this little bit to us for? This is a preacher now. <laughs> sometimes the preacher, we don't know the whole story. <laughs> It'd be hard on folks sometimes. Ah, the men then went to John Wesley privately, and he said, before my conversion, I had ran up a lot of bills, and now I'm skimping on everything, buying nothing for myself so that I can pay off my creditors. He says, I've been eating parsnips and water for several weeks. And he says, I want to, because what Jesus has done to me, I want to show the people that I owe that I have been transformed. I got to settle my debts. John Wesley apologized and asked the man for forgiveness. We don't know the whole story. Hmm? And because Jesus knows that we have a limited perspective, that we don't know the context of a person's life and are unable to read anyone's heart, that the only way, hear me now, to truly help each other on the journey of love and to love each other well is when we first deal with the skeletons in our closet. Mm, you're not with me today. Mm. Uh, let's read verse 3, verse um, 7, 3 through 5. He says, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye? But, 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 the speck, but, but, the, but do not notice the log that is in your eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? And really what Jesus here is saying is that we need to be sensitive to the brokenness of others and first begin to deal with ourselves. Jesus is saying that before we can help our brothers and, and see clearly what is needed, we have to first deal with what's going on inside of our hearts. It starts with us. We have to deal with ourselves first. And if we don't, Jesus is saying that we will do more harm than good. Some of us are well-meaning. Don't sit there. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? Didn't you hear what the pastor said last week? <laughs> they always put it on the pastor too, by the way. And Jesus here is saying that a lot of times we are so focused on the sins of others that we ignore our sin. That's right. He calls, not as what Jesus says, he calls the sin of our fellow brothers and sisters specks, mm -hmm. splinters in comparison to our sin, which he calls a log. Hmm? And he uses an exaggeration to make his point to show how absurd it is for sinners to be focused on the faults and the weaknesses of others when their sins are far worse. You see, sometimes we point out, well, somebody is doing this and we know what's in our closet. Oh, you're not with me today. And what Jesus here is trying to get us to show, this idea of a log, it's like a, 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 a big a uh, tree log or timber that, that, that they use to, to bar doors. He's saying that that thing is so big in your face, you can't even really see what's going on with the other person, not with the eyes of grace. And so Jesus says something strong. He calls them hypocrites, right? He says he's not talking about hypo hypocrisy of acting like we have no sin, but the hypocrisy of ignoring our sin. Knowing something is wrong, but excusing it for whatever reason, pretending that it's not there, that there's nothing that needs to be changed or repented of. Perhaps looking at our sins are hard. It brings shame. Mm. We don't want to face it. Mm. So we'd rather ignore it. It's so hard that we'd rather stuff it 
Hmm? Well, some might, you might get mad at me telling, they, I, telling, telling a story about their lives. But my oldest son, uh, when he was in the third or fourth grade, and they started giving him, introducing him to all the joys of mathematics. <laughs> um, he didn't enjoy it. And so what he would do, he'd come home and say, do you have any homework? He said, no, I don't have any homework. <laughs> of course, because my mother used to always check my bag every time I came home from school, we would check his bag. And what we would find in the bottom balled up was the homework. He would stuff it. He didn't want to face it. So he wanted to pretend like it wasn't there, hoping that it would go away. But we found it. And we made him do his homework. Now, he loves mathematics these days. Praise God for that FHA um, education. Amen. But that's what you and I do with our sin sometimes. in a bag and we pray that it would just disappear we wish we could wave a magic wand and what Jesus here is saying is that I need you to do some genuine introspection search your hearts before me so that I can deal with what's deep down in there. Jesus says he wants us, he wants to heal our deepest hurts and satisfy our deepest longing. And that's why he says, remove the beam from your eyes. Remove the sin. But how do you do that? I'm, and I'm almost done. Turn with me quickly. Keep your hand there in Matthew. I want to go to Luke. I think this illustrates this well. Luke chapter 18. And I want to read in your hearing starting in verse 9. Luke chapter 18. It's a familiar passage of scripture. And here's how the word of God reads to us today. Jesus speaking, he's, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed, thus God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. <laughs> I fast twice a week. I keep the seventh day Sabbath. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing, get this now, afar off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The difference between the two is that one understood that he's need of a savior. He understood like the song says, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, not my mother, not my sister, not my father, not my fellow member. It is me that's standing in the need of prayer. And Jesus says that when we ask for mercy, he says when we leave the place of mercy, we'll be right with him. We'll be forgiven. We remove the beam by first recognizing that I'm a sinner in need of the grace of God. Hmm? It is recognizing, like Jesus says in Matthew, that we are poor in spirit, that we are bankrupt spiritually without him. But notice what he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Why? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he's not just talking about 
the, the, the soon coming eternal kingdom when we will see him face to face and live with him forever. But he's saying you can experience the kingdom now. He's talking about himself. He says if you're poor in spirit, I will come in and I will flood your soul with my presence and satisfy your deep longing. To remove the speck is to recognize our need for Jesus. But the second thing that we need to do in order to remove the speck is to run into the arms of Jesus. Oh, you're not with me today. Hmm? Matthew tells a story about a leper um, who, when Jesus, after this sermon, was coming down the mountain, he ran into the presence of Jesus, fell down kneeling before him, and he says, Lord, I know if you are willing, you can make me clean. He was reeking from the smell of pus oozing out of his skin, and he was carrying with him the stench of decaying flesh, and his sickness was, ob was obvious and grotesque, but he brings himself just as he is into the presence of Jesus. And I want to suggest to you today that many of us sitting here today Oh, we're carrying the decaying stench of sin in our hearts. It's eating away at our souls and we're wreaking our sin. May not be obvious to other people, but when we look in the mirror every day, we know it's there. And Jesus says... You don't have to fix yourself up. You don't have to get yourself together. All you need to do is run into my arms. And don't you have to wonder if I'm willing. Oh, you're not with me today. See, some of us, our sin is so bad, we don't even know if Jesus is willing. But Jesus says, I am willing. And he touched him. Oh, my God. Jesus, when we come to him, not only is he willing, but he's ready to put his arms around us because he knows that he cannot become contaminated by our sin, but that his presence removes the sin. When he says remove the beam, he's not saying go try harder. Don't go, don't go read the seven steps to overcoming your sin. <laughs> he says, come to me. Yes, yes. And here he now, I love what he says. He says, verse 5, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, I'm about to, about to close, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. You see that? He's saying, and really what he's saying is that when we come to the place when we realize that we are all leveled, we are all the same at the foot of the cross, when you see another brother or sister struggling, you can see beyond the act and see a heart, a person that needs Jesus that needs mercy, that needs grace, that needs forgiveness, that needs patience. I love what Henry Nouwen calls it. He says that when we remove the speck and we allow Jesus to do what a thing, uh, remove the sin from our lives, it makes us wounded healers. We're wounded, but we understand the wounds and so we can minister to our brother and sister. Hmm? You see, when our hearts have been made clean by the blood of the Lamb, when our hearts have been made tender by the grace and the mercy of God, Ellen White says this is what it means to walk in the shadow of the cross. You're not with me today. When our heart is tender, when our heart is merciful, when we are patient, it means that we have encountered Jesus and his life, his shadow covers our life and we walk in the shadow of who he is. We see clearly not so much their sin, but each other's need for the grace of God. And this is how we love each other well. Hmm? 
close of the story. A gentleman by the name of Jim Corley. Oh, don't get that back in there. All right, sorry. Um, he went to visit his friend Alex in a dealership who worked at a dealership. And when Jim got there, Alex said, man, I feel, feel I, he said, I feel like a hypocrite. Every time I go to church, I feel like a hypocrite because I know that I'm failing to live my life in accordance to the will of God. So then Jim said to him, what part of the dealership are we in now? He said, well, we're in the, we're in the showroom. He says, now, now what's behind the desk, behind that desk over there? He says, well, that's the service station. That's where the mechanics are. And so he said to him, he says, well, he says, if I came to you and told you that my car is not working, it's not running properly, but I don't want to go to the service station, what would you tell me? He said, I would tell you we're crazy. That's what the... That's what the service station is for, to fix broken cars that are struggling. And he says, you know what? I want you to think about what we're talking about here today. And instead of thinking of the church like a showroom where image is everything, start thinking about the church as God's service department. And in the service department is the world's, the universe's best mechanic who can fix any car and make it run like new. And so, my brothers and sisters, come to Jesus. Don't give up. No matter how messy it is, come to the one that can fix our broken lives. Do you trust him today? Do you believe him? We're going to invite for the gangs to come. Praise God. That was an awesome word, wasn't it? I had to write that one down. Wounded healers. Hmm? Instead of thinking of the church as a showroom, think of it as a service station and a mechanic who can fix any car and make it run like new. Mm -mm. Brother, you, did, you said a mouthful there. Huh? I'm going to have to write a song about that. <laughs> That's a lyric there. <laughs> Praise God. And this song really fits right in with that concept, and that is that no matter where you are, what you've been through, there's still room for you. There's room at the cross for you. The cross upon which Jesus died Is a shelter in which we can hide And His grace so free Is sufficient for me And deep is the fountain that's wide as the sea. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for Yes, there's room at the cross for you.
Though millions have found him a friend And have turned from their old life of sin Still the Savior who waits To open the gates To welcome the lost Before it's too there's room at the cross for you. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you there's a room at the cross for you yes there is room at the cross for you though millions have come there's still for one, yes, there's room at the cross for you. Room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross, room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. And it's all because of his faithfulness. Amen. Faithful to love us, to forgive us, to redeem us back to himself. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior we serve. So I say this morning, you are faithful, Lord. Could need a little more of that track. More faithful than the sun To rise the stars To shine the seasons change You are Lord you are More certain than the things We see that our feelings Seem to say You are Lord you are And you faithful Lord never failing friend unchanging God eternal Savior and you are faithful Lord never wavering guide unending source as as creator and you are faithful Lord than a mice could ever comprehend our words divine you are Lord you are more certain than the things we see that our feelings seem to say you are Lord you are and you Never failing friend, unchanging God, eternal Savior. And you are faithful, Lord. Never wavering guide, unending source, as creator. And you are faithful, Lord.
unchanging God, eternal Savior. And you are faithful, Lord, never wavering guide, unending source, Jesus Creator. And you are faithful, Lord. Got one more song this morning, and, and I wrote this song going through one of the greatest trials in my life, and the Lord spoke to me in the middle of it and said, on the other side of this trial, you will be a better man. I stand at a river, I must reach the other side, don't know how to get there, the river is cold and deep and wide. So strong is the current, I'd be surely swept away. Stronger though is my father's hand, and he will make a way. This trial is that river, but I've been here before. I've learned from the last time that I'll reach the other shore. On the other side of this trial, I'll be a better man. I will know the sweet deliverance of my Father's mighty hand. I will have another battle won upon which I can stand. I'll grow closer to my Savior as I trust His master plan. And I will know him better. I will be better. And I will be a better man. You believe that this morning? And I cried with my whole heart. My God, what have I done to deserve what I'm going through? He said, it's just that you're my son, and I am doing a work in you, building patience in my child. You'll find on the other side that it's all been worth a while. So hold on to my promises as you watch my will unfold. You'll see that this trial was under my control Cause on the other side of this trial I'll be a better man I will know the sweet deliverance of my father's mighty hand I will have another battle won upon which I can stand I'll grow closer to my Savior as I trust his massive land, and I will know him better. I will be better. I will be a better man. I'm not talking about the sweet bye bye. And this here and now, he'll deliver me somehow. On the other side of this trial, I'll be a better man. I will know the sweet deliverance of my Father's mighty hand. I will have another battle won upon which I can stand. I'll go closer to my Savior. As I trust his master plan, and I will know him better. 
I will be better and I will be a better man. A better man. It's a beautiful song, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Gaines. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Spirit of the Lord, when the tops were taken off, these beautiful these beautiful implements, Lord, just saw the broken bread and my heart was broken because it reminded me that your body was broken for me. Your word says, by your stripes we are healed. We have come to this table to affirm, to acknowledge, and to thank you for your broken body for our sake. This is just bread, it's just water, it's just flour. But we acknowledge that it represents what you have done for us. And we ask that you would sanctify it and sanctify the use of it. That it would remind us of the wonderful sacrifice of your broken body. In Jesus' name. Oh, one second. We're going to do the prayer for the wine as well. And then we'll take in the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, 
This is the cup in the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood. Father, thank you for this sacrifice. Thank you for understanding and knowing what it was going to take to get us to this point in our lives. And so, Father, we are grateful for this sacrifice. We're grateful for your blood. Thank you, Father, for you knew what we needed. And we're grateful, oh God. Thank you. In Christ's name, we ask these blessings. Amen. Amen. You may take the bread. And Jesus says, take and eat in remembrance of me. have the wine, he says, representing his spilled blood, in whom we have redemption from our sins. Take and drink. On everybody singing, say near the cross. Near the cross. Come on, near the cross. Near the cross. Be my, be my cross. Be Come on, say, till my rapture, till my rapture, shall find. She shall find rest, rest beyond, beyond the reef. Come on, can we sing that again? Say, in the cross, sing. In the cross. In the cross. In the cross. Come on, say, be my glory. Come on, say, till my rapture soul shall find. Shall find. He shall find rest beyond the wind. Come on, let's turn that around and say, rest. Say rest, rest beyond, beyond the wind. Come on one more time. Say rest, rest beyond, beyond the wind.
Let's bow our heads. Lord, here we stand. You've spoken to us through our pastor today. Yes. Yes, Lord. We've had prayers that have separated the secular from the divine. Yes. We presented these emblems of your broken body and spilled blood. And no matter how they were prepared, there's a sacred application. There's a transforming application. And so we sit here, Father, consecrating ourselves by your power separating ourselves from the secular to the sacred. We want to be holy vessels, not walking above the earth, but walking among men, who when we come into their presence or they into ours, they will know that somebody has been in touch with Jesus. And so, Lord, as the pastor said, wounded healers. Jesus was a wounded healer, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement of peace upon us. And with your stripes, we're healed. And here we are, your people today. Transform us. There's no magic in it. There's just power in it. You can turn us around right now. As we sit, you can fix what's broken in us. Right now, you can do it. So that's what we're asking for today. Fix the purpose of our lives so that the theme is not secular, but sacred. Hear our prayer. Fix our hearts. Yes. Thank Guide you. Guide our steps. Thank you. Make us Thank love you. every moment that we know you. Yes. And may our experience be contagious, not to lift us up. That's right. But to lift up Jesus. Yes. And one day, Lord, when you come, <laughs> we'll see your healed, broken body. Yes, Lord. We will live with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Our hearts rejoice to say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, just before we close, probably one of my favorite parts of communion service because after this portion, we are reminded that we have been forgiven and we have been set free. Amen. Yes. Jesus tells a story of two brothers. The older brother is mad because the father threw a party for his younger brother. He says, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Jesus says, Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places have been given to us. Yes. Every blessing that God has yes. is ours. Yes. Let's claim it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Come on, say, would, would you be free? Come on, say, there's power. Do y'all believe that there's power in the blood today? Come on, say, would you? or evil a victim ruin there's wonder come on say there is power there is power wonder working in of the land oh yeah hey come on verse 2 say would you be free 
service with the lifting of the morning's tithes and offerings. Let me uh, gently remind you of our uh, need to support the HEAP ministry, which is the education scholarship program here at Hillcrest. Also, we're under a renovation campaign. I want you to remember to give your pledge faithfully. And then also tithes and offering. You can give it online at hillcrestnashville.org. Click on online giving. You can also go to adventistgiving.org. You can give it by cash app, dollar sign, The Hill Nashville. And you can also call uh, to schedule a pickup. That number is 615-307-0940. Let's bow our heads as we 
and seek the Lord at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to return unto you the tithes and the offering. Lord, we pray that they will go to the hastening of your soon coming and proclamation of the gospel throughout the world. And we will be sure to give you the praise, glory, and the honor that you are, are, are worthy of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, we want to sing our way on out of here. The song says, the song says, I will bless the, I'm sorry, that's, that last song messed me up, y'all. Um, the song says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Say, I will bless. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Shall we stand for the benediction? And I invite you to say Jude 24 and 25 with me. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. <laughs> to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Go in peace, go in freedom, children of God. You may be seated. The officers, please remain standing. Good. Look at that march. Hey, look, look like, oh man, you could tell they was all pathfinders. Look, as we wrap up, um, this is the last Sabbath of 2022. I love you all. Thank you all for sticking with us this year. Amazing things to come. Starting next week, we have our New Year service kickoff with a whole bunch of special things going on. So special and top secret that I don't even know about it. They just told me to tell you, please come back, tune in with us next week. Um, the media team is trying to do something new with our channel, but we still need 26 new subscribers. So if you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up so someone else can see this, share this directly with someone else who needs to hear this. Oh, tonight, six to eight, fun, fun, fun here at, here at Hillcrest. Uh oh, you got something to say. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Elder, Elder Tucker, come on, come on. Yeah, look at this, look at this. You can tell they cool. Look at how cool she looks. Look, I look, and I like these suits, y'all. So game night, come out tonight. I have worked hard for it to, to, to do different games. If my boss knew how much I worked on this, he would send Michael the bill for my paycheck this week. I know some of y'all are having parties tonight. I'm not gonna out you unless you come here first. Then I'm gonna dive you out and we're gonna come to your house and crash it. Come here, let your party be the after party. We're gonna have fun. The ultimate lunch lady is taking care of the food tonight. So come out, we're gonna have fun. Is the cake lady gonna be there? Oh, 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 see, oh, no, I'm joking, y'all still need to come. All right, as the ushers also ushers out, please, uh, again, next week, the kickoff, we love you. Happy Sabbath.